The evacuation plan of at least 640 Nigerians was met with resistance and arrest of some of the volunteer, uh, voluntary returnees, forcing the first airlift to be delayed by 10 long hours. Now, sources in South Africa explained that Nigeria's commission in that country had prepared the first 317 Nigerians for evacuation. The South African immigration then started causing problems by arresting Nigerians who were due to travel. They were demanding for papers and accusing them of traveling without the right documents. Some of the proposed returnees initially, underline that word, initially lacked valid travel documents, which forced the evacuation to be delayed till this week. Now, while the commission prepared valid papers for them, the South African authorities said they were going to be principalities of sorts. But as much as that sounds funny, we still have Daniel Dupe, by the way, and um, Tikwa Olayoko in the studio. As much as that sounds like we're being chastised, Daniel, there is a modus operandi. For you to go to a country, you need a visa, if that country allows for visas, you must have a passport. And if you must be leaving in that country, you must have something that is called, uh, I think, a state. Well, yes, a, a permit of sorts. And they have different names. And if, if in the US, you have the H2 for spouses, you know, you have the B1, you have, I mean, whatever it is, there are, there's a modus operandi. So if these people were found wanting, do you think that the South African authorities were in their right to do what they did? Absolutely. <laughs> I think they're in their right because... Um, so that's why I'm, I'm a little bit taken aback when I see things like, oh, they're causing trouble, they're causing problem. I, I, I do not really think that that's what's going on here. Look, if people are about to travel, there's a need for them to have proper documents because it poses security threats to their nation if... They cannot, I mean, if, you know, somebody is traveling, living in your country and, you know, first and foremost, you're wondering how does the person get here? How do we avoid such loopholes, you know? How does this person get that? It doesn't have valid papers or, whatever, or has it expired or what have you. So, you know, there's, there's a need for proper documents. If they're living, there's a need for them to be properly, you know, stamped out. Mm. That's the standard practice. You cannot just come in and out and expect that, you know, people are like, it's not possible. So, so I, I, I mean, you know. Even within the free movement areas of Africa, you still have to show some form of documentation. Right. Absolutely, absolutely. You need to, at least your identity to show where you're coming from. You know, so I think that it's important. It's 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 important for them as a nation for proper documentation. Um, I beg to say that they are not like us. You know, you know, it's important. Wow. Yes, it's the truth. I mean, because when you don't put your home in order. What do you mean they're not like us? <laughs> I mean, we're paying reciprocity fees right now because Nigeria is doing the same thing to some several other nationals, right? Oh, well, 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 I, but the truth so it's is, not like Nigeria is a free space you can come into. Uh, well, I absolutely hope so. But, but, but me and you know that, you know, in Nigeria, you know, if you, you just need to do the right thing and then, you know, you, you read the word, you know, act normal, you know, just act normal and then so some things are allowed to, to go. So, so for, for, I am just merely saying that for the purpose of, for security reasons, for proper, proper, proper documentation, things, they cannot just say, oh, because we wanted you guys out and now you're going out, just come on board the plane and go. No. They need to, I mean, if you have done something that is wrong, how do they even recognize you? How can they even pin you down? You know, how can they, if, if you are somebody that, you are the kind of person that they want to return to their country, if, if there's no paper to properly document your stamp your house, how would they be able to, say, deny you visa, you, mm. know, for, you know, for the rest of your life or something? So, all those things, there are, there are issues that, that surround them. They won't just allow you to come in and go with that because they want you out. Well, Deepo, uh, if you are deporting a person, do you have to go through that? I mean, I'm not saying that they were being deported, but if you were in a case of deportation, would this have mattered? As a matter of fact, I'm a very happy person this evening. <laughs> Wait. I have listened to many television stations, radio, and even uh, newspaper I've read a lot. This is the first time I've seen people that have, have looked this, to look at this issue dispassionately. Like the barrister said, you are leaving my country. I look at your paper. I didn't see anywhere I allowed you to come in. Hmm. And do you think South Africa is like Nigeria? I will just take things for granted. Wow. Let us be sincere with ourselves. I should be able to know how did you come in. I didn't authorize you to come into my country. You are leaving. I was in South Africa. We just allowed that to pass. Let me tell you one thing. Different countries with their different policies. In 2017, when we went to Israel 
on a holy pilgrimage. As we were getting to the airport, after checking our papers, they withdrew our passport from us. Mm. Yes, in 2017, December. It was on the day we were leaving that the passports were returned to us. That's their country. That is what they want. So somebody is leaving my country. I look at my record. I didn't see when you came in. And you think I would not want to know how, did you, how you came in. Uh, uh, come on, this is, a, this is a country. Because for so many reasons, I should be able to say, how did you come into my country? If you, are come, if you are coming to my country, some of them lived there for seven years, some of them lived for five years. I wasn't even aware you were in my country. And you want South Africa to just allow them to go like that. So that they will be able to forestall similar things happening in the future. You must be able to tell me how you, come, how you came in. So that I will be able to, pl to, to plug that loophole for security reasons. You know, the, we, uh, since after the 9 11, that's uh, <laughs> yesterday was 9 11. Anyway. Yes, it was. Since <laughs> yes. after the, when we mentioned 9 11, everybody knows what we're talking, mm -hmm. talking about. Every country has, be, has become very agitated when it comes to the issue of security. We might be like a school about our own security. That is our own cup of tea. But other countries will not take it. I am 100% in support of the South Africans. Because if, how did you get into that country? Let them go and tell the authorities there. If you're able to, nobody is saying, not saying, they're not saying you're not coming back to your country. You are free to come. But come and tell me how you entered my country without my knowledge. It's as simple as APC. I don't think there's any issues there. Uh, it's just a matter of explaining yourself, how did you come in? If you come into a country illegally, the worst penalty they can give you is to deport you, mm. even if you are caught. But the point is, come and tell us. So the issue of coming back is that one is settled. They mm. must be deported. Though this one is voluntary uh, <laughs> coming back. <laughs> but this one, they will be deported. But you must be able to tell the authorities of South Africa how you came in. If it was a case of sabotage, on the part of their officials. Let them, they, we want to know. If you cross the border and enter illegally, that means their borders have become so porous, like our own Nigerian, Nigerian border. Mm. Let them know. Mm. And that's exactly what South African people want to know. Mm. You are in my country, you have lived for five years, I wasn't aware you came in, I wasn't aware you were living here. Please come and tell us, how did you come in? These five years where you went, where that you live in my country, what were you doing? If you are living in somebody's house, then let me be able to know. That person is also a supporter. Somebody that housed you for five years, a South African, and didn't inform the government. Those are the things I think the government of South Africa want to get to know. And nobody should stand on their way. Mm. It is their country. Mm. But, they should but, be able to but, run But it. there are people who are also saying that this could cause a diplomatic row between Nigeria and South Africa. Do you see that happening and why? Well, diplomatic row, only diplomatic row. <laughs> Do we not, I mean, are we not already having a row it's of already Exactly, <laughs> it's already there. And, you know, unfortunately, I, 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 I just like to see this from the perspective of the lessons that can be learned from it, really, because diplomatic war will come and go. This is not the first time the attacks, although it looks, it's a little bit more pronounced this time around, but mm -hmm. we've always moved past it. I think our relations are really deep, you know. I, I mean, we have, I mean, be, uh, beyond being African brothers, uh, South Africa is the next biggest economy after Nigeria in Africa, so, you know. Well, they're bigger than us now. Oh, we. Really? No, they aren't. Then they Are you sure? Because, no, I mean, we became the poverty capital of the world. No, no it doesn't, it doesn't affect you. the size of your, you know, it's just about the size of your economy. They are not. <laughs> so size. basically, yeah, yeah. And even the past four or five months, they have been having serious economic recession. Mm -hmm. well, and that's why the people have uh, become much Maybe because exactly, of all of the exactly. killings and the drama that's been yeah. happening. So, so, so we have a lot in common, you know, as you know, for example, in the entertainment sector and what have you. So, you know, so those things we meet there, you know, we'll get past this. You know, we'll definitely get past this current Will we? I mean, we'll, oh, definitely. We'll, to, 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 I mean, before the end of the year, you know, things will stabilize. And I just hope that Nigerians will just now learn to behave themselves wherever they are. You know, do things the right way. You cannot go to another person's land and then, you know, now think that you are now equal because you think they owe you one favor. You know, I mean, you don't do that. You, I, I, I've been yeah. holding this question <laughs> in. Uh, <laughs> Why is it that when Nigerians go to certain countries, they act right. And when they're in certain other countries, they feel like they're home. And so they act in a certain way that we all know. Why? You know, it's a pity that some of the traits that we exhibit here, we want to export them. Mm. And we don't realize that Nigeria is Nigeria. We are peculiar people. Other countries, don't take some of these things with Are those peculiarities positive in any way? Because, you know, we keep saying, oh, we're peculiar, <laughs> oh, we're people. peculiar people. But, but those peculiarities, <laughs> do they rub off the no, right way? No, it's going to be to ourselves. There's a lot of things that we take for granted here. In other countries, traffic offense is a very serious offense. 
And every Nigerian see it as one of those things. So this place is blocked. Let me go to that link. I want to get my passport. I must be able to cut some corners. You see, there are certain things we do in this country that uh, we cannot do elsewhere. Let's just take our tra dry drivers as an example. Just a commercial bus driver driving in Lagos. They drive. When they get into Republic of Benedia, when they cross the border, let us do the local palace. They behave. They become sensible. Some years ago, when we were at uh, MBI television, there is, this man is a doctor. He was the chairman of a Neoma state creation movement stuff. stuff. He was in America. He was a very big man in America. He was coming to Nigeria regularly because they were agitating for the creation of a Neoma state. Then we had a program on MBI then. We call it political platform. Anytime the guy comes around, he comes on that program to propagate the philosophy of a Neoma state. I'm talking of about 2001, 2002. Dima mm. said he observed something. That the same passengers that are living, let's just say, Jeff Kennedy Airport, when they get there, they form a queue. They move gently, quietly to cross the border. I'm sure we all have, have had this experience. Same, but this same set of people that have lived in America for years, the moment they touch down in Nigeria, they break loose. The man said he has been trying to know the philosophy behind that thing. I always ask that question. Is there something here that That's says the, it's a free for all? <laughs> Come and this and I'm talking. Of, I'm talking of 2001. It's not just yesterday thing. Well, I'm talking about two weeks ago. This man, I'm, so, I'm, that man has been there. The man said the same set of people. They are going back to the U.S. when they are at Mutala Mohammed Airport. They break loose, rowdiness, all manner of things. But the moment they board the plane and touch down in America, they behave. They behave. They behave. What is the problem? So, so what? But at times, some of these things, some people, they get carried away. They want to do it in other people's country, and they say, "Hey, man, we aren't doing it here." We say those people don't like us. Don't love us. We shouldn't go to that way. Like Barista said, there are lessons to be learned. An American president, I can't remember the name of the American president, he said it is better to have a people that get angry easily than to have a president that gets angry easily. Mm -hmm. You see, I, I, at times I listen to radio, people are saying, yeah, go and shut down American, uh, the South African embassy. Go and close down. But there are repercussions. There are repercussions. Mm. You see, Nigeria is in a delicate situation. There are some foreign powers that are waiting for Nigeria to make a false move. They quickly queue behind the supposed enemy of Nigeria. They queue behind because they have been looking for any to deal with us. So that is why a Nigerian president must be always be cool-headed mm. before you take action. The Bakasi okay. example should have given us, they should have told us what the international community can do against Nigeria, mm. the Bakasi story. Mm. So that is why I must commend the president for the matured manner he had handled the matter. It, to well, some of us outside, it might seem, ah, this man don't you know, get action now, but he's looking at the repercussion. Okay. He's looking at what will come after. Okay. Uh, Daniel, finally, before we go. Can we try to learn from this that has happened, the xenophobia, the mistakes that have been made, the illegal migration? I recently talked about why Nigerians leave Nigeria to these other countries, even countries like Bene. Of course, we have a problem, but can we learn from that and make our home really a place for Nigerians to want to stay and not run away? So, so I, I like the passion in the so-called returnees, you know, they're there and they're back now. So they, they drive to want to seek for greener pasture. You know, when they get there, they probably have jobs, you know, and the, the locals, some of the locals don't, you know, mm -hmm. they're probably skillful. They drive, the anger, some of them are defending themselves now and all of that, mm -hmm. and I hope they're really watching and listening. You know, I like all of those. And I'm just wondering, what can they do with it? This back is your here. home. Mm -hmm. This is your home. That drive, that anger, that's that drive to say I want to defend myself. Come and use it here and demand questions for the right those. for the in the right ways, in, by the obviously, way. Obviously, <laughs> obviously in the right way. I'm because, just saying that you know you need if because this is your home, nobody can deport you from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So if you know that you know there are no opportunities for you here, why is this so? Question those things rather than you go out there, they, they, are, they are pushing you uh, uh, you know around, you know, nobody's listening to you, mm. they treat you with disdain and all that. This is your own home. If you want to make it better, you can make it better. If you have a skill, you have to use it. If anybody's denying anything, demand action, ask questions. 
that is that that's the way right. to channel those those strength and you know, I want to say thank you to you, da Daniel Odupe, lawyer, and of course Dick Bolayoko, journalist and political analyst. Thank you, gentlemen. It's been a very healthy and robust it's conversation. It's I'm it's hoping it's that we all uh, learn something from today's conversation. But before we go, here's my take. As much as we want a corrupt, free Nigeria, it is our duty as Nigerians to play a role in making Nigeria corruption. If you don't say, oh, it's, it's the politicians who are corrupt. <laughs> what did you do last week in your office? Do you stay on the straight and narrow? Do you ask for kickbacks? Are you that guy that is always asking for a brown envelope if you're in my job, you know? So we all have a role to play. Let's not make it a politician or a leader's duty to sanitize the system. All hands have to be on deck. I know a lot of people will hate me for this, but it's not just the politician that is the problem. You and I are part of the problem. And talking about the xenophobic attacks and the Nigerians who have returned and the problem that you know, held sway in South Africa yesterday for those who were not well documented, if you go illegally to a country and then you want to run out, and you, you're hoping that the country would not ask questions, then <laughs> I'm guessing that you do not know what's coming next. But let's try to stay on the straight and narrow. If you're going to somebody's country, please don't be an illegal, because that way we can actually tell who you are, where you are, and what you're doing, and we can protect you as a country. Although a lot of people will say, nobody's going to protect us. Nigeria doesn't protect anybody. But let's do the right thing. It all boils down to being the right kind of Nigerian. Flying the green, white, green, and not making people have a, you know, that look on their face. Mm, Nigerians, they've come again. Start changing the narrative for Nigeria. I'm Mariana Kun. It's been Plus Politics. Have a great day.